Hello, this is Mr. Kenyanola, and I'm going to help you find the missing side using two different methods. Okay, so let's inspect what we have. Um, let's use my blue pen uh, because it's blue. Okay, so uh, two different methods. Um, so we have a right triangle, and you're probably thinking, well, it's a right triangle, so I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Um, but we only have one side, which is this 18, and this 18 is the hypotenuse. I'm going to write hypotenuse over here uh, just to remind me that this 18 is a hypotenuse. Um, we also have a, another tool like the 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles, um, but hmm, this is a 48 degree angle. So don't you dare say this x is uh, 9 radical 2 or 9 because this is 48, not 45 or 30 or 60, or whatever. So. What other tools do we have? Um, our last tool uh, is these three right here, sine, cosine, and tangent. And we could use these three because we have an angle and it's a right triangle. Uh, so let's do a little review. Sine theta, which is the angle, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse cosine of the angle theta, remember it's a Greek symbol, is adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the last one is tangent of the angle, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine, so sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent, ka adjacent over hypotenuse and toa tangent is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse so let's see which of these three we're going to use so we have this 48 and we're trying to find x and x is the opposite because this 48 is looking at if this was baseball it would hit the ball on the opposite end right here so x is the opposite so we have an angle we have the opposites, or we're trying to find the opposites, and we have the hypotenuse, opposite hypotenuse, opposite hypotenuse, opposite hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine, don't say sin, sine of the angle, which is 48, equals the opposite, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 18. And let's put that invisible one under there. All right, so, and let's zoom in on our proportion. We have uh, the sine of 48, which is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. And let's cross multiply this proportion. It's not even a cross, it's an x. x multiply, cross multiply, whatever. So, 1 times x is just x, and 18 times sine of 48. Okay, let's put the number in front of uh, the trig ratio, the trigonometric ratio. So, and so there. Hey, x is by itself. We're done. x is by itself. We're done. Yeah. But let's say someone said, hey, how old are you? And if you said you are, hey, I'm 18 sine of 48 years old, they're going to think you're re really weird. So let's not give them a weird answer. Let's give them a numeric answer. So let's grab our trusty calculators. Make sure it's in deg mode degrees. And let's just type in what we got. 18 times sine of 48 is that number, 13.3766. So let's write x. And we're not going to write all those numbers because that's a lot of numbers. Let's round it to the nearest thousandth, so 13 points, and just remember, thousand has three zeros, so three decimal places, so to there, so 13.37. However, that fourth digit is above four, so we're gonna, we're gonna bump this number up to seven, 13.377. So, here is the numeric answer, and here is the exact no answer, because this one doesn't round, this one does round, but both of them are the correct answer. All right, there you go. So, but the question said, find the missing side using two different methods. 
So, look at that. Here is another triangle. The exact same triangle. Here it's twin brother or sister or, I don't know, that's sibling. Triangles don't really have sexes. They're just triangles. So, let's find the exact same answer, correct answer, using a different method. And I'm going to grab a different color, my red pen, and let's use a different method. So, exact same identical triangle let's get the exact same answer using a different method all right so remember triangles have three angles right here we only have two angles the 90 and the 48 so we, but we could figure out what that third angle is using the the triangle sum theorem knowing that all three angles add up to 180 degrees so let's add 90 plus 48 is 138 degrees that doesn't mean this angle is 138 we have to subtract that number from 180 so this angle is 42 degrees all right now we're going to focus on this triangle now and see what we got here uh, we have this 42 we have this X which is the adjacent side it's next to the 42 but not the hypotenuse. And we have the hypotenuse because it's opposite the 90 degree angle. So hype, which is also the longest side. And we have the adjacent. And let's look at our little, our notes here. Uh, we have adjacent, we have hypotenuse, adjacent, we have hypotenuse, adjacent, hypotenuse. So we're gonna use cosine. So we're gonna set it up as cosine of 42. Don't use a 48, we're, we're using the 42 now. Cosine of 42 is equal to x, which is adjacent, over the hypotenuse, which is 18. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of 42. Now, let's do some algebra. Let's put the 1 under here, and let's cross multiply. 1 times x is just x is equal to 18 times the cosine of 42. And... I'm going to grab my phone calculator because some of us don't have uh, fancy, fancy calculators. So let's just use a phone calculator because most of us have phones. So if you have one of these models, um, turn it sideways. Make sure you don't see anything here that says radians or, or gradients. Um, if there's nothing there, then it's in, in degrees. And we're going to type it in a little differently. We're going to write, type in 18 times 42 cosine. So it's a different order. We typed in 42 first, then the cosine. That's not the answer. Oh, what, what button did we forget? The equal sign. Let's find out what it equals. 13.376. So x is about 13.3. Three, seven, and we're going to bump this number up one because the fourth digit is above four, so seven. And hey, look at that. Even though my writing changed a little there for some reason, we still got the same answer. Okay, all right. That's how you find X using two different methods. And so let's do one more example, and then we're done. Okay, find the missing side using two different methods. Uh, let's cover up its identical twin, and let's just focus on this first triangle right here. We have a right triangle. We have the hypotenuse. We have this 38, and we have the 20, which is next to that 38, so it makes it adjacent. We got hypotenuse we got adjacent we have adjacent we have hypotenuse adjacent hypotenuse adjacent this time we're going to start off with cosine so cosine of 38 is equal to its adjacent which is 20 over x so always make sure to put the hypotenuse in the denominator some people always force the variable to be in the numerator or on the top of the fraction no so make sure it's always adjacent which is 20 and the hypotenuse even though it's x in the denominator so now we can solve it let's put a 1 under here and let's cross multiply 1 times 20 is 20 is equal to x 
times cosine of 38. Are we done? No. X isn't by itself. So let's get X by itself. What is X doing the cosine of 38? Or what is the cosine of 38 doing to the X or trying to do? They're trying to multiply. Um, so the opposite of multiplication is division. Okay, let's get X by itself. So let's divide cosine of 38 on both sides to cancel out this cosine of 38 and allow X to be free to be by itself. It wants to go solo, so let's let it go solo. So X is equal to 20 over cosine of 38. There we go. X is by itself, but that's a weird answer. Say, how tall do you want that wall to be? Uh, I want it to be 20 over cosine of 38 feet tall. Uh, then that person's going to think you're weird. So let's give them a non-weird answer. Let's give them a numeric answer. So let's grab our phone calculators. And let's just type it in. 20 divided by 38 cosine. And let's type in the equals. And it is about... And let's, let's do it to the third decimal again, uh, 25.38. And this 3 doesn't bump that 0 to a 1, so it's actually just 25.38. Oops, right there. Okay. All right. There's our, here, here are our two answers. So here's our numeric, and here is our exact answer that looks weird okay but it says two different methods so let's get its identical twin and let's figure out the same answer using a different method remember a triangle has three different angles so let's figure out that third angle using the triangle sum theorem all three angles add up to 180 degrees so we have 90 plus 38 which is 128 180 minus 128 is 52 degrees. And let's grab a different color because it's a different method. So let's make this 52 degrees with my blue pen. And now ignore that 38. And because I said ignore that 38, you're just staring at that 38. You're just staring at it. Don't stare at the 38. Focus, focus on the 52 degrees. Okay, so let's see what we have here. 52, stop looking at 38, focus on the 52. So 52, and we have its opposite, which is 20. And we have the hypotenuse, which is X. And so let's look at what we have here. We have opposite, we have hypotenuse, we have opposite, we have a hypotenuse, opposite, hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine of 52 don't use that 38 remember we're ignoring 38 we've moved on from the 38 and we've gone to the 52 52 is equal to the opposites which is 20 over the hypotenuse which is x and remember it's all it's okay to have the x in the denominator just make sure it's the hypotenuse when you're using sine and let's put the invisible one under and let's zoom in and let's do some cross multiplication 1 times 20 is 20 is equal to x times sine of 52. And we want to set x free to be by itself. So let's divide both sides by sine of 52. Sine of 52. And these signs cancel each other out and allows x to be free to be by, its, by itself. Oh, that's kind of sad. It's a loner. It's, it's alone. Oh, oh well. X is equal to 20 over sine of 52. So there is our exact answer, non-estimated answer. But let's get a numeric answer. So let's type in 20 divided by sine of 52. <laughs> Look at that. And we've got this exact same answer when we use cosine. So 
Let's write x is about 25.38 units. This, let's fix that. And I'm not writing very well right now, but whatever, look it. We have the exact same answer using two different methods. So find that third angle for your second method and just cross multiply and you'll have gloriously gotten the same answer twice. And if you get it twice, more than likely, you've gotten the correct answer. All right, there you go. Um, that's how you find the missing side using two different methods, um, yeah, which is happens to be sine and cosine, cosine and sine. So use this to get A's on everything and then use it in the future to build cool things when you're an architect or an engineer or uh, something cool. All right, well, that's it. Have a great day, and yeah, have a great day. Have, have a great day. Have a great day. Cool, 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 cool.